What's up guys, Bob Buskirk here at Think Computers and I'm going to be giving you an overview of SteamOS or Steam running on Linux in big picture mode. This is running on the Alienware Steam Machine and this is the interface that you're going to see if you happen to purchase a Steam Machine, it's going to be like this. So I'm going to go over some of the main things and then we're going to dive pretty deep into the settings as well to show you some cool things. So first, of course, when you turn on your Steam Machine, this is what you're going to be brought to. This is the main screen. So um, first, we can go down here and we can see some of the things we were last playing. You can resume playing a game. You can see what your friends are playing. And then it kind of gives you a reminder, you know, don't forget to play um you know some maybe some game you haven't played in a while or you just downloaded or something like that um, we can go up here and we can see that i'm logged in and you can see your profile and all that kind of stuff and see all your pretty much all of your stuff that you have on steam your screenshots videos all that kind of stuff you can see in here you can of course go down and edit your profile as well get out of that and up top we have our notifications here and this is just like kind of, you know, if you actually log into Steam on your PC or if you're used to that or even logging on, in online, they kind of give you some, you know, what's on sale, what's new and stuff like that in the Steam store. We have our downloads here and we're not downloading anything so we can't see uh, obviously what this would show if you were downloading something, but if you're downloading, it will show you the speed, it will show you all of the downloads that you have in line, you know, things you're getting ready to go ahead and download. Over here, we have our settings. Now, I'm gonna go into this in just a little bit and we'll dive down into each one of these, but this is your system settings. So everything to do with SteamOS is in here. And then we have our power, and when we hit it, you know, we have the option to uh, log out, like log out of Steam, to turn our controller off, to restart our system, and to turn off our system. I also have enabled desktop mode as well as the HDMI. So this Steam machine has HDMI input, so I can use it for another device, which I, again, will go into a little bit later. So our main thing, of course, is our library. So this is our library of games. You can go in there, and you can see, you know, you can see what you've been playing lately, um, what's popular among your friends, you know, try something new, these are games I haven't played. And of course we can go over and see our recent games, our installed games, um, and you can actually filter your games. So obviously if you don't have another PC in or on your home network, you can't play all of the games in your library because some of them might be PC only. Um, so what we can do is we can go in here and filter and we can filter by SteamOS compatible games and then we can see what games will natively run on SteamOS without having to stream. Now, if you want to stream, say I want to play something, I don't know, let's say I want to play Grand Theft Auto, I can go on here and it says it's not on SteamOS, but I can go ahead and stream the game. Um, which makes it really easy. Like any of these games that I may have installed on another system on my home network, I can go ahead and stream. So it does give you the ability to play all of the titles that are on Steam without having to, uh, you know, have them installed on here, which is kind of cool. Um, but again, it, that does require you to have another PC running Steam, um, and of course, powerful enough to play these games um, so you can stream. And obviously streaming over your network, it all depends on the speed of your network. I would highly recommend a wired connection if you're gonna go ahead and stream games that aren't available on SteamOS. Um, so that's pretty much your library tab, but you know, shows pretty much everything that's going on as far as all the games and videos and everything that you have installed on the system so we'll go out of there and of course we have our store here and this of course allows you to purchase games if I want to go in and buy a football manager I can go in and I can oops you know I can go in and I can buy it if I want you know add it to cart and I'm good to go if I want to buy it now they did change something just recently with the store so before the store only uh, the store would show uh, different games. It would show all of the games available on Steam. And of course, if you're a SteamOS user or a Steam Machine user, you want to find games that are compatible with SteamOS. And that's kind of hard to do. And they didn't really have an option to do that, to search by SteamOS only. And now it is SteamOS only. So all of these games are SteamOS compatible, which is nice. Um, and they actually changed that in the settings. So if uh, by default it will show that show applications that can only be played on your current operating system um, and we can hit show all content and now oops, when we go into the store 
It will show games like Fallout 4, which obviously you can't play natively on SteamOS, and things like that. That's nice because when I first got to Steam Machine, it was showing um, all of the content that a controller could be used for, not just SteamOS. So I like it that they finally made it so I can view things that are Steam only SteamOS compatible so I can get some games that will natively play on the system. Um, so that is pretty nice that they've gone ahead and done that. But the store, of course, is all of your SteamOS titles. Currently, there's around 1,500 plus titles, uh, SteamOS compatible or SteamOS native titles, which is nice. Um, and of course, more being added. And a lot of, um, because SteamOS is becoming more popular, a lot of older titles are getting ported over to SteamOS as well. So you'll have that. Um, but a lot of titles, you're not gonna get bored, believe me. That's more titles than a console for sure. So you have a lot of games to definitely choose from. Um, web, of course, just gives you the ability to go on the internet. Um, some, you know, they have Google, Twitter, Reddit, Facebook, uh, you know, all of that. And of course, we have Think Computers on here. You know, go ahead and it will load the page, and you can, you know, go down and kind of see everything. Um, you know, I wouldn't really suggest using this, but if you need to bring something up really quick, you can go ahead and do that. Pretty easy to do. And then under Community you can see you know all the community content that is on steam you can go ahead and check out and everything um you know just as a mad max screenshot you know you can go ahead and do that you know there's different things that you can go ahead and check out um and see and everything like that what's going on in the steam community and obviously you can go into your friends activity and things like that see what your friends are up to and obviously you can go over to chat and we can see my friends that are online and we can go ahead and chat with them if we want. I uh, can see our groups. You can add friend right from here as well. All that kind of stuff. You can join groups and, and all that kind of stuff, which, you know, whatever you want to do, you can go ahead and do that as, you know, just like the community tab and all the friends and everything like that. So that is basically the main overview of the SteamOS. It's very easy. Uh, it works really well. It works perfect for loading games. It works perfect for watching videos that you can buy through Steam and things like that. Everything that you would want, extremely easy to use. Now, I'm gonna dive down into the settings because there's a lot of things that you can change and you know, kind of move around. So this is more in depth if you wanna change some things. So first, um, under your account, of course, you can view your account details, change contact email address, manage Steam, Steam Guard and all of that stuff and has all of your information and all of that. Friends, of course, uh, you, just different information for your friends, like you know when you receive a message, when your friend joins a game, you have different notifications and all of that. And you can change your profile name as well as your avatar from here. Under controller, um, so the Steam machine that we have, the Alienware one, comes with one Steam controller. Now, you have the ability with the dongle that comes with this to add three more controllers for a total of four. So this is where you would go ahead and add a controller. You can manage your configurations. Um, so there is a desktop configuration that you can set up that's already set in here. Um, there's different configurations that, that I'm actually going to show you in just a little bit that you can have for certain games and things like that. Um, and that just shows you the desktop configuration. I think you can, yeah, you can browse the configurations and everything like that and community configurations and, and all different things like that with the controller. On-screen keyboard um, will give you the ability to select the default on-screen keyboard, you know, or use the daisy wheel on-screen on keyboard and all of that. And of course, the language of the on-screen keyboard. Under display, obviously you can select your language. Um, you know, we have English. The interface um, enabled, and it, this is one thing, if you wanna get into Linux and you wanna install some things, you have to enable access to Linux the Linux desktop. This is turned off by default. So if I enable this, it is already enabled, I can go ahead, oops, and I can hold in the Steam button on my Steam controller and I can switch to the desktop if I wanted to. Now, if I turn it off, I, so it's, now it's off. If I hit that again, you can see the switch to desktop is not there anymore. But I like to leave that enabled in case I want to go ahead into the desktop, install some software and things like that. Resolution, um, you just adjust the image to fit the display. Uh, pretty simple right there. And then Alien FX is for the Alienware Steam Machine. Um, there are two LEDs on the front of the system. One that is the power button, which is the Alienware logo, and then one that is on the side, which is the Steam logo. And you can change the colors as well as the brightness of all of that. Under audio, 
uh, the interface, you can go ahead and set your Steam Audio settings and you can mute everything. You can turn your ambient sounds up or down, movies, navigation sounds, all of that. And it gives you information on your audio. And if you're doing optical out on this, this is where you would reconfigure that um, to set your audio out to the optical rather than go through HDMI. Under music, um, I guess you can put music on this. I didn't really look into this really. Um, scan at startup, scan Steam folders for soundtracks. So it looks like you can do that. Um, you can set up a music library, I guess. So if you do have MP3s that are on, say, your, your PC or somewhere else, it looks like you can go ahead and set up a music library on here so you can listen to music. So this can be a music device as well. And then voice. Um, this is auto transit my voice and then you can set microphone volume and everything like that. We don't have a microphone installed, but most headsets should work right off the bat as long as they have Linux drivers. Um, you can set your recording device and recording port and all that kind of stuff on here. Um, and then we go into features, Steam overlay. You can set what you want your overlay to, you know, your keyboard shortcut for the, for the, uh, for the Steam overlay and then keyboard shortcut for the screenshot as well as controller shortcut for this, for taking a screenshot. You can go ahead and do that. Web browser, um, you can set your default search engine and uh, delete your browser cookies if you're not looking at, if you wanna delete everything uh, as far as your history and all that, you can go ahead and do that. For broadcasting, um, you have the ability to set friends can request to watch. Um, anybody can watch, you know, you can set up different things for broadcasting. Uh, the video dimension for broadcasting in the ma in the uh, maximum bit rate and then record and broadcast my microphone. So you want to turn that on or off if you're going to go ahead and broadcast. In home streaming, of course, this sets up your streaming. Um, if you want to stream from a device, from another device. So if I had another PC that is that would be on in my uh, on my home network, it would show up here and you could enable streaming or disable streaming. You know, it's pretty simple to do. Um, and you can have it balanced, beautiful. You can do an advanced client options as well um, for all of that. So in, in home streaming is a big thing. It's gonna be a big thing with SteamOS because again, not all titles are available on SteamOS. So if you are a PC gamer and you do have a PC in your home, you have the ability to say, say with a new game like Fallout 4, which is only Windows, um, you can stream it to SteamOS and have the ability to play it. Family view, um, you know, this is just, you can use family view with the account, you can set that up. And family library sharing, of course, you can go ahead and set this up, authorize this to use the family sharing as part of Steam. And then under system, um, we already showed you this, this is our down, or this is the uh, settings for our downloads. And you can select your download region, the bandwidth, uh, you know, limit your bandwidth, limit scheduling, and you can throttle downloads while, while streaming and allow downloads during gameplay. You can set that as well. Um, under your network, you can just see your uh, network settings were connected via wireless. So we can see everything. We can see our wireless network. We can see our IP addresses and all of that. And you, can, you can go in and configure everything if you want as well. And then under system, um, this gives you all of our information. Um, about what we're running here. So you can see our CPU clock is at 2.9 gigahertz. Uh, we have a dual core CPU in here, uh, two cores, four threads, system memory, um, video card, all of that stuff. And this gives us the ability to check for updates. Now, the Steam machine by default will check for updates. So if there is a new update being pushed out of Steam OS, when you turn on the system, it will instantly go ahead and it will update. So you don't have to worry about that. But this will go ahead and uh, you can check for updates and you can view update news. And you want to uh, have this selected participate in the client beta. So when new beta builds are put out, you get them right away. It's kind of like being on the fast ring for Windows 10 updates. It's the same thing. Time zone. Now this is one thing that's pretty weird about my Steam machine at least. I set my time zone and it's wrong. Um, I'm set for uh, UTC minus five, which is Eastern Standard Time, which I am on. Um, if I change it too, it doesn't, it doesn't change anything. Um, and it shows that it's seven o'clock in the morning when it's like 11 o'clock at night here. Um, I'm not really sure what's up with that. I haven't figured out why. Um, again, if I change myself to like mountain time, it still doesn't change the clock. I'm not sure what the clock, what's up with that. Um, it just hasn't fixed itself. I'm not really sure why. Um, 
so yeah, I, I don't know why my clock is really weird on my system. It's just just odd. Um, under disk management, um, this shows the item and the file size on disk, and you have the ability to just delete them from right here. So if you want to delete some games or something like that that's taking up space, you can go ahead and do that very easily. And then add library to shortcuts. So if you happen to be versed in Linux um, and you have an application, say like OBS or some other program that you want to go ahead and add into Steam so you don't have to go to the Linux desktop to launch it, you can actually add library to shortcut. And these are all of our applications that we have installed on um, Linux. So we have OBS and we can add a shortcut. We have Spotify on there as well and we can add a shortcut. So then when I go into my library, they'll be there and I can launch them within Steam so I don't have to go to the, uh, the you know, Linux desktop. So that kind of dives deep down into the settings and a lot of the stuff that you can do. It's actually really cool. Um, another thing that I did want to mention is that if you have another HDMI device, like I have my Amazon Fire TV stick actually plugged in to Steam OS, or actually plugged into the Steam machine in the back because this Steam machine does have HDMI in. I can actually go ahead and I hold in the middle button and I click on switch to HDMI input. And I believe I have it turned on. Do I? Yeah, and now I'm on the uh, Amazon Fire TV. So I can go ahead and watch stuff. I can go to Netflix. I can do all of that. Um, the reason for this is it gives you the ability. So, you know, my TV that I'm using right now for some reason only has two HDMI inputs. One of course is my cable box. My other one um, was my Amazon Fire TV and now that I have this device, it's this. So then I would have to walk up to my TV, unplug one and plug the other one in. Now I have the ability to just have my Steam machine on and then I can run my uh, Amazon Fire TV if I want as well. I just hit the, uh, the Steam button on the controller and it goes back to this. So you can see how easy that is. Um, Steam OS is extremely easy to use. Um, it comes with all the Steam machines, obviously. You could run it on a, on a Linux box if you want to. It's free to download um, and it works really well. I haven't had any issues. If I was somebody who was used to say an Xbox experience or a PS4 experience and I'm using this, it's extremely easy to navigate. It's extremely easy to use. All the games run great, which will have follow-up videos of us gaming and all of that. It just works really well. I can't say anything really bad about the Steam OS interface um, as far as being e easy to use and really intuitive and all of that. So if you have any questions about Steam OS, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. And until next time, catch you guys later.